Don't settle for the tofu version of Christianity. What? <laughs> Stay tuned to see what crazy connection I have made today. And hey, nothing wrong with vegans and vegetarians. You're all welcome here. I'm not hating on tofu, but stay tuned to see what I'm talking about. Welcome to the Intertwined Life Podcast. I am your host, Jenny Zentz. I am a wife and a mom on a mission. I've got a passion to help women discover practical ways to apply the power of God's word to our everyday stuff. I truly believe that our walks with the Lord should be seamlessly intertwined with our everyday lives. It should affect every move we make and every breath we take. So come on, let's do life together. You've got this, cause he's got you. Okay, everybody, welcome to episode 18 of the Intertwined Life podcast. I am glad that you're with me. I'm coming back from a, a short, about I guess about three-week break where I was taking time to catch up with some things and maybe get ahead of a few things. And do you think that it really worked out that way? Not really. <laughs> That's that's life, right? And that is okay. We roll with it. Um, but I do, you know, it's been a good time. It's been a good season. We've got a lot of great things going on. I had the opportunity to speak a couple Sunday mornings ago at our church, and that was a great blessing and a lot of fun. And I will probably be putting up the audio for that before too long so that you can enjoy, hopefully get some good stuff out of that message that the Lord laid on my heart. And just been, you know, getting back into the swing of the school year and different life stages and phases and seasons for the kiddos and all that that entails and a few other things going on. And it's, it's all good. And so here we are, episode 18, and I wanted to encourage you not to settle for tofu Christianity. And so what am I talking about? Well, so this morning, I'm going to drop a couple of resources for you guys and obviously lots of scripture as always. So just remember, I always list every scripture reference and any uh, resources that I mention on my website at jennyzents.com slash podcast. You can find this episode or just look in the show notes. I'll have it all linked up there. So if you miss anything, you can go back and find it. So this morning I was actually listening to a new podcast. I don't know how new the actual podcast is, but it's new to me and I was very excited about it. It is called, well, actually I was listening to the Lazy Genius podcast, which is a lot of fun with Kendra Adachi and she's just hilarious. I really enjoy listening to her. It's simple. It's quick. It's down to earth. It's hilarious. So I encourage you to go check out her podcast, but I was listening to her and she actually recommended a podcast called the Newsworthy Podcast. That's the Newsworthy, one word, podcast. And it is with a former um, journalist, I believe, named Mandy... Uh, Erica Mandy. All right, Erica Mandy. Sorry for butchering all that, but go check out the Newsworthy podcast with Erica Mandy. As I said, I'm just getting into this, but I, as a mom, years ago, I said, you know what? I can't take the news anymore. And if you've listened to some of my earlier podcasts, you know that my degree is actually in political science and all of through college and early 20s. I was a news junkie. I always knew what was going on. I was always in the throes of that. I worked for a nonprofit, um, conservative nonprofit think tank training facility type deal in a DC area. And I was all in. And once I became a mom, one, I just got burnt out. And two, I could not handle the news. It's too much. It's too negative. It's too scary. I just couldn't do it. So honestly, I am uh, sadly one of the least informed people you will find these days. And I just kind of, you know, I let Tim handle that and he's my filter. And if I need to know something, he tells me. <laughs> and so that is kind of where we've fallen. But I found this podcast, the Newsworthy Podcast, and Erica Mandy shares about a 10 minute clip every day with the top news stories. Um, I've only listened a couple times, but so far it's not bias. It's just like, here's the main things that you probably need to know to be up on the big stories for the day. And then you move on with your day. So I actually listen to it like while I'm cleaning the 
kitchen up after breakfast, get the kids off to school, start eating things up 10 minutes. And I feel like I know a little bit of what's actually going on in the world. And so it's been helpful and I enjoyed it. Well, I'm listening today and she, <laughs> she gives this clip that tofu sales have skyrocketed since COVID and <laughs> that Google searches have doubled about recipes for tofu. And the assumption is that with COVID and the down, you know, the less production of meat and all of that because of not as many people working and not as many safe facilities and all of that, that people have been looking for healthy alternatives to real meat, right? So if you know the scripture, you'll know, I believe it's in 1 Corinthians where Paul says that we should be onto the meat, onto the meat of the word, that if we accepted Christ and we're in that infancy of our walk at the beginning, we're at the infancy. At the beginning, we're drinking milk, right? Just like a baby. But then at some point, we got to grow up and get onto the meat. And tofu is an imitation meat, right? Nothing against tofu, nothing against vegetarians and vegans. That's not where I'm going here. But the fact is, do not settle for an imitation Christianity, okay? There's plenty of it out there. There's plenty of that supplemental, feel good, get me the energy I need to get through my week, check it off the list kind of thing, but it's not the real deal. And I'm not even necessarily talking about specific churches or specific pastors or specific worship music. You know, there's so much out there about that. And to be honest with you, I don't know. Sometimes it just makes me sick about all of the different um, stories I see tearing down other churches and other worship teams and, you know, all of that. Yes, we need to kind of weed out, I guess, you know, the false falseness in the world because there is some of that out there. But I want us to focus more on our inner self because the Lord looks at the heart and your number one job is to answer for yourself. When we get to heaven, God is not really going to ask us about our neighbor's walk or our, even our pastor's walk even our spouse's walk, he's going to look at you and be like, so how are we, right? Why should I let you in? And the only true answer is Jesus. Now, I'm not telling you that, you know, definitely there's going to be this moment where he's going to say, why should I let you in? I mean, you know, that's, that's not where I'm going about how all that's going to unfold. The fact is the only way Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. And it's so easy, it's gotten so easy to identify with Christianity. It's not necessarily always popular, but sometimes, you know, there's a, a movement around you and you find great people there and great friends there, and you go in and you get your coffee at the cafe and you enjoy the... Um, show and the vibe of the worship music and you might raise your hands and then you get fired up by the message you hear and everyone's excited and there's a great feel in the air and then you go have lunch with your friends and you go home and you check it off for the day. I want to know, is it staying with you as you go out into your Monday, your Tuesday, your Wednesday? Is it affecting your everyday life? Is it intertwined? Is your life intertwined? Is your walk with the Lord in your everyday life so entangled that they cannot be separated? James tells us that work, faith without works is dead. And people can get theologically concerned about that scripture. But here's what he's saying. You know, it doesn't mean a lot if... Tim and I got married and he asked me to marry him and we both said, you know, yes at the altar. And then he never was kind to me again. He never kissed me. He never looked at me. He never took care of me, watched out for me, checked in on me, got to know me, had fun with me, laughed with me. You know, if then we just kind of went on about our separate lives would I believe that his love was true and real? No, I wouldn't. Would there be power in that kind of love? No. 
Now, I'm not here to judge everyone I see about whether or not they are right with the Lord and whether or not they truly accepted Christ, because I can't judge that. That is really something that everyone has to settle in their own hearts with the Lord. But Romans 10 tells us, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. It's got to go from the head to the heart, right? It's got to be real. It's got to make a difference. It can't be something I just claim. We're actually told that even the demons in hell say that there is a God. So it's not just saying, yes, I believe there's a God. Sure, I'll, I'll say I believe that Jesus is God's son. But have you put your faith and your trust in him? Have you come to the end of yourself? Have you realized that I can't do a thing to make myself good enough or right enough or perfect enough to be reunited with a perfect holy God because sin is what separates us from him. And the fact is, we can't do enough. We cannot make ourselves perfect. There is no way. But Jesus is that way. Scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians that he made him, God made Jesus, who knew no sin to become sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It is only by putting our faith in Jesus and accepting that free gift that he died on the cross as a perfect sacrifice for our sins and took our mess and freely gives us his righteousness so that then we can stand before God, not perfect in our humanness, but perfectly veiled in the perfection and the righteousness of Jesus Christ that so that when God sees us, he sees Jesus. And we can be reunited in that way with the perfect father. It's deeper than just saying, sure, I believe that. You know, it's truly accepting in your heart. The scripture says in, again, in Romans 10, 13, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Whoever, he doesn't care anything else. You just put your faith in him. You call on his name. But you know what? In Matthew 7, 21, Jesus told us, not all who say, Lord, Lord, will be saved, will enter the kingdom of heaven. And what he's saying is there is a difference between using his name um, to fit in or to get some attention or to feel comfortable in your life because maybe in the environment you're in, like, yeah, that's what everybody does. There's a difference between using his name and calling on his name, depending, hanging your life on the name of Jesus. There's a difference there. Hey guys, I just wanted to jump in here really quickly and well, interrupt myself <laughs> to ask you a quick question. As you're listening to this episode, has the Lord brought anyone to your mind? Has he laid anyone on your heart? Maybe a good friend, a neighbor, your kid's teacher, Anybody that you just think, man, I wish she could hear this. If so, would you just take a second and hit that share button? Yes, it's a great way to share the Intertwined Life podcast and get it out there. But even more than that, it's an opportunity for you to reach out to another sister and just say, I see you and encourage her and come alongside her and build community because that is what this is all about. And so if that's on your heart, Take a second and do that. That would be awesome. And maybe together we can increase the impact we have on reaching more women to help them apply the power of God's word to just everyday stuff. Okay, back to the show. Okay, so I do want to go back really quickly and say that was actually um, the verse about he made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. That is 2 Corinthians, not 1 Corinthians, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So here's the deal. First question is, have you made it personal? Have you made it real? Have you really and truly called on the name of Jesus and made him your Lord? And if not, stop right now and do that, Okay. Here, this may be surprising to some of you, but did you know there's not like an actual word for word sinner's prayer in the scripture? <laughs> That's not, that is a great term that has helped many over the years, but that's not like there's not the sinner's prayer in the Bible, okay? It is literally like Paul said, confessing with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and 
believing in your heart that God raised him for the dead and you will be saved. Putting your faith in him for the forgiveness of your sins. Just, you know, and yes, I mean, praying is very helpful for that, right? So if you just pause and you say, Lord, you know, if this is you, just pray this with me. Lord, I am so sorry that I have been saying your name, but not really, really trusting it and accepting what you did for me on the cross. And Jesus, I thank you for what you did. I thank you for your sacrifice. I thank you for taking my sins so that I could have your righteousness. And God, I know and I confess that I cannot do enough good stuff to make myself worthy of you. But I put my faith and my trust in Jesus and what he did for me on the cross. And I accept his free gift. I accept his righteousness. And I thank you, God, that now I am washed clean by the blood of Jesus. And I give my life to you, Lord. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. And may we just, Lord, walk every day together. Show me your ways, Lord. Thank you for your love and your forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, it doesn't have to be just like that. It, if you just prayed that prayer, the scripture tells us that the angels in heaven are rejoicing. Like if you said that for the first time and you for the first time got Jesus from your head to your heart and you finally really put your true faith and trust in him and not on yourself trying, okay? Christianity is not a religion. It is a relationship. Jesus did not like religious people. I do not like religious people. I do not like the term religious and religion. Because like the Pharisees were the religious people. They were the ones with all the rules and the ones that everyone thought, well, if anyone's going to heaven, it's them, right? And I can never really be that good because they sure as heck would let you know that you're not that good. That's not what it's all about. Relig religion is man trying to get to God, but a relationship, Christianity, is God coming to man. It is Jesus meeting us where we are. We cannot do enough to be holy, awesome, and perfect. But putting our faith in Jesus gives us all of that. Okay? It is a free gift, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is by grace, through faith in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Okay? So now what? Right? Now what? Tofu Christianity. Don't settle for tofu Christianity. Okay? I love Ephesians chapter 4 verse one, Paul says, I beg you, I beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Okay. He's not saying you have to do all these good works in order to be called or in order to be accepted, but he's saying you've been called into this awesome life. Now you've put your faith in Jesus. You're being called up higher. Lead a life that reflects that. Our lives, our everyday lives are the way we say thank you to the Lord for what he has done for us and the way we show the world what God has done for us. Jesus in Matthew 5, 16 said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. And we go back to what James said in 2, 17, that faith without works is dead. And I love the Amplified. I use Amplified Classic a lot. And if you look at that verse, it says that faith Okay, I'm going to read it to you. Faith, if it does not have works, deeds, and actions of obedience to back it up, it by itself is destitute of power, inoperative, and dead. Does that make sense? Does that make, I mean, there's no power in the faith that doesn't produce fruit. And the way that happens is not you trying, 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 but it's us growing in a walk with the Lord. And then through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can do these things, right? First Peter, he tells us that he's given us everything we need for life and for godliness. Colossians, oh, I love this one. So Colossians 2, 6, he says, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus, so walk in him. And I always say, that's like saying, okay, so you got saved, now act like it right? Let's start putting some feet to our faith, some actions to our words, some compassion to our conviction, right? Let's show the world the love and the grace because that's the only way we're here. 
And sometimes we get so hung up on grace that you can get into a vein of thought that's like, well, why, I don't really have to do anything because the blood of Jesus covers me. The grace of God covers me. So I don't have to really live in any certain way or be even concerned about how I live because I live under grace, not under the law. True. I'm not saying that's not true, but that attitude, first off, check yourself. Did you really put your faith in Christ? And are you really living from a place of gratitude and awe of what the Lord has done for you? Because that's, you know, like if you give someone a gift and they just throw it off to the side, did they really accept your gift? It doesn't look like it was very accepted, does it? If it's just like cast off to the side. So kind of think about that. Only you and the Lord can work that out. But, you know, Paul said, what, what are you saying? That we sin, that grace may abound? Goodness, no. And some people want to live that way. Galatians 6, 7, friends, I love this verse. It's so clear. It says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will reap. If you're going to live a mess in this world, you're going to reap a mess in this world. Because God's not going to be mocked. Come on, people. You know, don't just say his name and try to use his name to get your own way with people or in the world. Let's make this real. Let's make this real. So how do we grow? Well, talk to your daddy, right? Like I said, if, if Tim and I had gotten married and never talked again, guys, we got married. We met and married in seven months. We had not even seen each other in every season of the year when we got married. And if we had stopped talking at that point, we would never have really gotten to know each other. And for a while, when Tim would call me on the phone, he would have to say, hi, this is Tim. But then as we talked and as we grew in our relationship, I could just answer the phone and he'd say, hey. He didn't have to tell me who he was because I knew his voice. The more time we spend with the Lord, not trying in our own, trying to make it happen, but just spend time with the Lord and trust him to do that good work in you. He is faithful to complete that good work in you. And I love what Hebrews 4.12, it says that the word of God is alive and active. So stand on what we know, regardless of how we feel. I say that a lot. If we know the word, we can stand on the truth of the word. And that takes the pressure off of us. Okay, he says his word is alive and active. So get in there and read the word. Get to know the word. Spend time in the word. And don't get all bent out of shape if you feel like you don't understand it. That's really not your job. Your job is to show up and let God do that work. The Holy Spirit, Jesus told us, will teach us the things. It will remind us of the things. But we've got to give mind to what he said, right? We've got to give mind to the scripture. And then the Holy Spirit will help unfold things to us. We're, uh, we are told that 1 Corinthians, we are changing from glory to glory. Okay? So we don't just automatically have everything we need to know. It's in there. And it's the treasure hunt is so much better, right? Than just being given everything. Get in there and dig. And that's where relationship happens. That's where really getting to know the lover of your soul happens. It's exciting. Just show up. Isaiah 54, 11 says, God said, my word that I send out will not return void, but it will accomplish that for which I send it out to do. So that's another one you can stand on. Lord, I may not get it, but I'm here. And you tell me that your word is alive and active. You tell me that it will not return void. So I'm trusting that and I'm here. Okay. And just watch him work. Just watch him work. Um, what was the other one? Yeah, Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these other things will be added to you. Don't go freaking out about all the stuff you've got to figure out. Just seek God. Seek God. Seek to be in his presence continually. Um, I think that that is it for right now. I want to encourage you with some other resources. Um, I call, there's some ladies I call my Fab Four. There are four women who actually are all kind of interconnected and know each other that really bless me, especially when I just need a little extra, oomph, right? A little fire lit under me. Um, it is Beth Moore, the woman, love the woman. I love the big hair. It's... <laughs> Because I always am trying to get like more volume. So I've always loved the Beth Moore hair. But she she's hilarious. But man, she teaches the word. 
she digs in and she teaches the word. And then Joyce Meyer, I love Joyce Meyer, a more practical, down to earth, intertwined life type of Bible teacher, I would challenge you to try to find. Easy to understand, challenging as all get out. Um, Christine Kane, fiery, fiery lady from Australia. Love to listen to her. She is passion in a small package. I like to, I like to think she and I are similar. I was listening to a podcast once where she did an interview and they were asking her like, what's your favorite book of the Bible if you had to choose a book? And I said, Ephesians. And she said, Ephesians. I'm like, yay. There were so many things that she said where we lined up. So I like to think that we're, we've got a lot in common, but man, she is, she is passionate. I love to listen to her. And Priscilla Shire, love that woman. I love everything about her. I love just to see her makes me feel more peaceful and joyful. She's beautiful inside and out. Um, what a family legacy. The daughter of Dr. Tony Evans. That whole family is amazing. And listening to Priscilla make things real, passionate, and straightforward. And again, just seamlessly intertwining the word of God with our everyday life. So those four women, I will link to um, their podcast or websites or something so that you can glean some of the good stuff that they're putting out there. Um, it is quite a blessing to have so many amazing people being used to teach and share the word of God and encourage and draw all of us along, making us better and better. As the scripture says, iron sharpens iron. And so we are really um, blessed to live in a time where we have access to so many wonderful teachers and we can just encourage each other, bring each other along. So on that note, if you enjoyed this podcast, please share it. I hope you got some great stuff here. I look forward to plenty more coming your way. We will be digging into holidays. I'm going to talk about holiday anxiety and <laughs> maybe a lot of other great stuff. I love you guys and I hopefully I will talk to you very, very soon. Have a great day. Hey friend, if you enjoyed this episode and you got some good stuff out of it, there's a few options you have. One, you could click that little subscribe button because let's be honest, who's got time to remember to check back and see if there's a new episode, right? So click that subscribe button and then when a new episode comes up, it will just by the magic of the internet pop up in your Dropbox and it'll be right there for you whenever you're ready. And also, if you would review this podcast, Oh my gosh, if you like what you heard, get on there, give it a five-star review. If you didn't like what you heard, just pretend it never happened, okay? <laughs> but if you would do um, a review for me, just take a couple seconds and do that. Not only would I be crazy excited, but also it would just be a great way for us to partner together for you to help this podcast be seen by more women out there. And you could be a part of helping more women discover these practical ways to apply God's word to just everyday stuff. So I would love it, love it, love it if you could help me out in one of those two ways. Mm -hmm.